All right, today is 6.1 uh, reviewing and then 6.2 day one. So today is actually 6.2 polynomials day one. And the main goal for today is to see if you can factor stuff like this. And I bet you just can't look at that and go, oh, I know how to factor that. But I'm going to show you how to do it with synthetic and long division. So uh, we did do this last year in honors higher algebra. Uh, and I think maybe uh, some of your teachers might have skipped long division, which is going to make it more difficult for you now. Um, but I'm going to uh, blow through it pretty fast. So if you can't uh, keep up, then go back and watch this video again to see how this process works. All right. So first, about yesterday. Yesterday is about sketching them and uh, then being able to tell limit notation. Let's just do a quick limit one. If I had one that, for instance, did that, Write me the right side limit for this function. It has a limb in it. I'll pause for a second while you give that a try. Okay, let's see if you remember this. It was the limit of the function as x approaches, and if I wanted the right side, you'd want x to be approaching positive infinity, would be the right side limit. And then you say equals. And then you say the y value, because this is what the x value is. x is going way over this way. What would the y value be? Way up that way. Positive infinity. This is where the y goes. y goes there. Raise your hand if you had that one right. OK, good. That's a limit. And that's just the intro to limits. They get much more complicated, but it's a, uh, it's a good start. OK, now, how about take this one and make a sketch for me? Then write the left end limit. Hint, getting the lead term would be really smart. This, and this, and this, and this can all be multiplied out. You can figure out, don't forget these powers too. You can figure out what the lead term is. Then from that, you'll be able to tell if it ends going up or down. I'll pause while we try that. So you don't get too far off. The lead term would have been negative 5. x to the 3 and 4 makes 7, 8, 9. Do you think it was negative 5, x to the 9th? Raise your hand if you said the same thing as me. Okay, good then you know that since the lead term has a lead coefficient that's negative, it should be heading down on your right-hand side. And since this is odd, it better be going up on the left-hand side because odd ones are different on the right and the left. And since the right's going down for sure, because of the negative here, that's got to be going up. All right, I'm going to pause for a second while you finish that off. Okay, so... There's a root at negative 2 and at positive 1. We'll make this positive 1 and we'll make this negative 2. And then we'll have it be, notice this is a degree 3, which snakes through at the 2. The snake here. Well, this can be tricky to draw. Might want to just say, that's a snake. In case yours doesn't look like it's really snaking and like it's more... Uh, just cutting through. This other one is a power of 4, and any even number, like 2s or 4s or 6s, those are all bounces. So it's got to be bouncing at, uh-oh, oh, bouncing at the 1. There we go. It's good. This is okay. I can bounce this way, right? Okay. And then... Fill in the sentence for me. The y-intercept is where what? x equals 0. I'm going to go figure out the y-intercept quick. It might not be exact, but at least I'll know if it's a big positive or a big negative number. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. I'll put a 0 here and a 0 here and a 0 here. This part's just gone. And then 0 times anything makes it all 0. All right. 
That is weird. I'm going to pause for a second and figure this out. Okay, yep, and the kids pointed out it makes sense, actually, that the y-intercept should be zero because that was a root I missed. This had a root and this had a root, but that also had a root. Would you agree that's kind of like saying x plus zero squared? Same exact thing. And that shows me that there's a zero root also. Zero makes the whole thing zero. Okay, so this should have been a spot that I highlighted in the first place. And it's supposed to be, let's see, it's bouncing there too. So it's going to go bounce there. And then do a snake through there. So this is degree three. This one's a degree, degree two. Degree, actually four. Because it says so right there. And that makes this a degree three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is what we said it was. Remember what we said to negative five x to the ninth? So it's a degree nine. It's all working. That was a tricky one, though. Okay. Now, last thought. Could we test intervals on this thing and make sure we did it right? If your life depended on this? Yes. So what's between zero and one? One half. True, there's other intervals that are easier to test, but a half isn't that bad because all we care is, is it positive or negative? Because see, it's down here, it means it's, we think it's negative. I'm gonna put in a half and it won't take long. Positive, positive because it's to the fourth power, positive and a negative. Positive, positive, positive and a negative makes it what? Negative and therefore this is negative in here and that's what I expected it to be because it's below the line. So yay, I tested it and it seems like it's right. Okay. And sh finding the y-intercept, I just proved why that's a good idea. I mean, it helped me to catch an oops. I was going to forget to have it hit that root. So, all right, there's my sketch. And then the right, the left end limit. Well, the left end is here and it's going up to infinity. So I'm going to say limit of the function. As x approaches negative infinity, that makes it the left side because the x's are approaching negative infinity. It'll equal infinity. Okay. So that's a review. That brings you up to date. Hopefully, feeling solid on that stuff. Other than, like, hey, I almost made a little mistake there, too. But Then what's the new stuff? The new stuff, I need to make sure that you're ready with a few things first. Long division, plain old-fashioned long division, is going to help. Because you're going to be doing things like this today. You're going to be doing long division with polynomials. So how are you supposed to do that if you can't do long division with just plain old-fashioned numbers? So everybody write down 2 goes into 28. And I want you to try to remember the process you would use. Don't just go, oh, uh, four, uh, it must be 14. Think about the process you used one little step at a time. Does 2 go into 2? Yes, it goes in there one time. You go 1 times 2 is 2, and you draw a line. And you're going to bring stuff down. Try to remember the process. I'm going to pause while you work through the old-fashioned long division. And some of you probably never learned long division. Well, that's going to come back to haunt you now because it's going to make it much more difficult to do long division with polynomials. But the good news is you're a lot smarter than you were the first time you learned long division. You probably spent three weeks on it before you understood it then. Literally, you can understand it after one day now because you're that much smarter. All right, I'm going to pause for a second. Let me give that a try. Okay, so if I do the 2 and the mine, notice I have to put a minus in here. You're going to have to do that on the long division of polynomials. Then I subtract them and I get 0, and then when I don't have anything there, i got to bring stuff down. You'll have to do the same thing on the polynomials. You'll have to bring stuff down. Next you go, does 2 go into this? Yes, it goes in there 4 times, and 4 times 2 makes 8. And you have to draw a line, and you make this the opposite of what it was. And then if you get a 0 at the end, that's a good thing, right? Because it means there was no what? Remainder, good. Same thing as what you want in polynomials. I got this writ board, one written on the board in class that you can't see on the video here, but it, it's a gigantic long division of polynomials question. You should be able to do this by the end of the hour. And it ends with a 0. That means there was no remainder. That means it worked. I want to warn you, one of your homework problems doesn't work. It doesn't have a zero at the end. That's good to know. It's like sometimes a teacher would ask you, how many times does two go into seven? And you'd have to say two doesn't go into seven. 
it goes in there and not an even number of times. So is two a factor of seven? No. And that's really the question we're asking today is, is this a factor of that? And two would not be a factor of seven. You could force it by saying two times 3.5, but two wasn't a factor of seven. So here is a typical uh, question. This one's already been factored. How do we get things factored like this that are really complicated? Well, synthetic and long division help us do it. So I'm going to, for the sake of time, jump right into doing one with you. Is that a factor of that? Well, then we long divide it. Actually, I feel like this one's a little too tough to start with. So what I'm going to do is add a page, and I'd like you to try one that's nice and simple x plus 3, x minus 4. Write that down. Would you agree that that is factored? Okay. What is it when it's not factored? x squared minus x, because that's the outside and the inside put together, and then the last is minus 12. Good. So you get that we could say is x plus 3 a factor of x squared minus x minus 12? We already know the answer is yes. And I already know that the answer is x minus 4, and I could put it there, but don't. Because my point is, we, I want to show you one where you already know the answer. But how would you follow this process? Okay, so step one. Step one is, what should I put on the top? Just like, again, if I was doing 5 goes into 23, I'd say, does 5 go into the beginning number? Does 5 go into 2? And the answer was no. Okay. I don't need the x plus 3 to go into this whole thing. I just need it to go into the beginning part. So you start by putting an x up here, just like I would start by putting a 4 up here. And 4 times 5 is 20, and I'd put it down there, right? Well, I'm going to put an x up here, and i got to go this times this and this times that. And I'd have x squared plus 3x. Draw a line. Go ahead, do that. Stay caught up with me. here. Now, what's the next thing I do on my little uh, divide problem? I go minus 20. Well, I go minus x squared and minus 3x. Notice I have to distribute that negative. Now, this cancels, which is awesome. And it gives me a simpler answer. I have negative 4x, because I put these two together, minus 12. Where did the minus 12 come from? Just like when I get 3 here, I would look to see if I could bring anything down to put with it, like make it 35 or whatever. In this case, I didn't have anything left, so I would say, oh, mine has a remainder of 3, which means 5 was not a factor of 23 because it has a remainder here. In our case over here, it's going to work out perfect, and we will not have a remainder. What should I put right there? Minus 3. Close. Minus something. Negative 4. How do I know negative 4? Because this times this has to equal this. All that really matters is the first term needs to work together. Negative 4 times the x makes negative 4x, and that's perfect. It's the exact opposite of the other one. Once I change it to the opposite down in this row, and then the negative 4 times 3 makes negative 12, and again, what I mean is I can't just add them the way they are. I change this to the opposite and change that to the opposite, and now everything cancels everything, and I got 0 remainder, which is what I wanted, and there it's factored. And the factors are x plus 3 and x minus 4. And the book describes this as, if I go back to this uh, slide, let's see, the remainder, when you're all done, you should have, uh, it's in a different slide, you should have the remainder as something you could say plus zero at the end, but that's really kind of dumb. We don't need to put the remainder up there as plus zero. 
I'm fine with just saying that my answer is x plus 3 and x minus 4. To get y, we want to sum that all up because what's the point? We're trying to factor this, and it is now factored, and here it is. And yes, you could put plus 0 at the end, but I, that's what the book wants you to do, but I don't like it. All right. I know they have a good reason for it, but it would take me twice as long to teach this, and i got to keep moving. All right. So now, actually, yeah, let's do this one. This one is a much more challenging one. I'll get it set up with you. Only much more challenging because you have four things. If you're going to have to do more steps to get this to work. Oh, wait, something's weird with this. Does anybody see it? Yes. It's in the wrong order. And that would mean that things would get messed up in the middle of your problem. So I need to rewrite this and have minus 4x squared plus 8x minus 16. Notice I go power of 3, power of 2, power of 1, power of 0 for on the x. Think of that as having x to the 0 on it. And they're all lined up, and now it's going to work nicely. All right, so usually there's somebody who just doesn't even know how to start. Who can tell me what to put here so that when you multiply here, it'll match up nicely right there? Yes, ma'am. 2x squared. And a hint for you is always start with x and then just go x times x, that's x squared. Hmm, not enough. x squared. x squared times x, that's x to the third. Ooh, it's getting close. Now I need a 2. 2x squared times x, 2x to the third. Cool, it worked. Should I stop right there? No, got to distribute it. This times this, and this times that. Makes negative 4x squared. Opposite, opposite. Cancel, cancel. Everything cancels. Sweet. So what do I bring down? That and that, because I need two parts. If I just asked, does it go into 8x, you'd say no. But if I, I have both parts down here, then it's going to work well. Mr. G, what'd you put up there? And 8 times x is 8x. And 8 times the negative 2 is negative 16. Perfect. Opposite, opposite, and that means there's nothing left. What's that thing called again? The remainder. If there's a remainder zero, you're good. It worked. So what is the answer? You're supposed to put it like this as your final answer. X minus 2 times 2x squared plus 8. And the question was, was that a factor of that? And the answer is yes. And here's proof. Now I want to warn you, if the question had said factor it all the way, it's not factored all the way yet. There's one more little thing that could be factored out. Yes. Oh, hold on. Let, let just I want to finish that thought. It's, this has got something else that needs to be factored out. What is it? Yes, sir. Yes. Pull out a 2. If you can factor it, you should, right? Take the 2 out of that, put it all the way to the front, and you'd have 2, and then x minus 2, and then x squared plus 4. That's factored all the way. Do you think x squared plus 4 could be factored? Only if we use imaginaries. Are you thinking about x squared minus 4? Because that could be factored. That could be factored into x plus 2 and x minus 2. But x squared plus 4 cannot be factored other than with imaginaries, and we're not going to go there. All right. How many of you were able to follow that through? Okay, good. And I have one more kind of problem to show you, and that is something called synthetic. And I purposely left that other problem alone up here because I was, that one's already been done over here with long division on the board in class. People at home, you can't see it. That's okay. You don't need to. Because synthetic is definitely different than long. One thing we got to get straight. Say I had this. Is x plus 5 a factor or a root because they're different? 
Is x plus 5 a factor or a root? It's a factor because it's something in the middle of a multiply problem, something times something. If I have like 6 times 8 is 48, 6 and 8 are factors because they're things that are being multiplied, okay? So the, the x plus 5 is a factor. What is the root of that? Negative 5. Do you get how negative 5 kind of goes with x plus 5? But they're different. This one's a factor. This one's a root. Also known as a zero. Because when you put negative 5 into the equation, it would make it equal zero. Okay, so when they ask, is x plus 3 a factor of that, to do synthetic, you don't use x plus 3. You use the root for it. Because everything about synthetic is cleaner. There's no variables in synthetic. So instead of x plus 3, I use minus 3. That is the root of it. And then I write down all the coefficients. There's a 1 here, a 2, and a 23, and a 60. 1, 2, negative 23, negative 60. Draw a line. What I just did there, I just plucked off all the coefficients off of each one. There's no x's in the whole thing. How many guys are remembering this a little bit from last year? Okay, good. So the next part is the only time I ever used a Snoop Dogg uh, song in class. Remember it? What's the lyric? Drop it like it's hot. Because that, how do you start this thing? You just drop this. Inexplicably, you just drop it down there. Drop it like it's hot. And now I have to multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. What do I mean? This times this makes negative 3 goes here. Now I add. What's 2 plus a negative 3? Negative 1. Now I multiply again. Always multiplying by this thing. And that makes positive 3. Then I add negative 20. Then I multiply. Positive 60. Then I add 0. Does that seem like a kind of like a remainder? And it is. If you look over at the problem on the board here, I got a 0 at the end just like I got a 0 at the end here. And who sees the other parallel with what's on the board and up here? Yes. These coefficients here are the coefficients of what? Of the equation at the end. The, the top here, see 1, negative 1, negative 20. So that means our answer is right here. This is x squared, this is x, and that's constants, and that's the remainder. So we usually draw a wall here to wall it off from the remainder. And all of that... is my one part of my factor. And then the factor for this, actually, it says right here, was x plus 3. So I would write the final answer as x plus 3 and x squared minus x minus 20. And yay, you've got it factored. If the question had said, factor it all the way, what's my hint here? It's not factored all the way. So what could factor further? This part could. And you could factor it in your head, plain old-fashioned way. X plus 3 stays the same. And then this would be what? Say it if you know it. Yes? There you go. That's factored all the way. But if the question was, is that a factor of that? Is this a factor of that? The answer is yes, because we got a zero remainder. All right. That's Long and synthetic division. We took at least three days to learn that last year, maybe four by the time we were all done mastering it. And you already got it, I hope. But I know this is kind of complicated stuff. So I figured not everybody may have it yet, but by the time we take the test, hopefully you do. All right. So let's actually look at your homework together. Everybody find this one, this yellow one. This is day one.
I'm going to have you skip number five. And on the next page, I'm not going to have you skip any of them, but I'm going to help you start setting them up. So look at number seven here. What goes in the little box? And please don't say X minus one. One, the root. And then I use the three things, three, negative two, and one. And then Snoop Dogg will tell you how to start. Drop it like it's hot. Multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay. And remember to write your final answer as the two factors being multiplied. It says plus the remainder. I don't care. If it has a remainder, I would just say, eh, it doesn't work. You don't have to write it out with its remainder if it didn't work. In other words, if there is a remainder at all, you got a problem. It didn't work. Number 11, you go negative 2. And then who's got, who notices what's weird about number 11? There is no what? X squared or X to the first. X squareds or X to the first. So we have 1X to the third. And then how many X squareds? Zero. Zero. And how many X to the first? And then there's an 8. This last one's going to be very similar, except it happens to have a fraction. Don't worry about it. It's got a fraction. So you're going to put a fraction here. One half. Okay. You're just going to multiply things by a half. I think you can do that in your head. Taking half of them. All right. This page feels like too much, uh, so I'm going to have you skip this page for now. This page, again, feels like it's going to give you an assignment that's going to go over your 20 minutes, so... Uh, we're skipping that one, and we're skipping this one. But I want you to do this one, and I want to talk it through with you for a second, because I don't know if I've ever used the word multiplicity in your hour. The multiplicity, actually, I should change that to a different number, like four. Okay, multiplicity in this one is that power. That's the multiplicity. So what's the multiplicity on this guy? Four. That's the official name for that power there. Multiplicity. Okay. So then if it's saying that that's a zero, well then let's write down what the factor would be. X. Now you can do this. Minus one half. Good. And then it said it has a multiplicity of 2 to the power of 2. Then you're going to do long division. And this part's easy. 4, negative 28, 61, negative 42, and 9. And wait a minute. I'm doing the... Sorry, I was doing synthetic, which did not work on this one. 4x to the 4th minus 28x to the 3rd, etc., etc. Now, here's, this is honors precalc, so this, some of this gets pretty deep, but you'd need to multiply that out where you wouldn't be able to actually do this problem. So that's your stretch problem. And there's one my last page that you may skip. I'm only asking you to stretch on one problem. If you're not willing to try and be stretched on that one problem, you are in the wrong class. Because you signed up for the honors class. So step up. Not asking you to do all the challenge problems, but every now and then there's one that's doable. And I'll tell you about them and stretch. Okay, that's all I got for you. Oh, question? Yes? Good question. You can follow the directions. The directions do say what to do. So the first page, I think, is uh, uh, long division. See, polynomial long division. And the second page was synthetic. Okay. All right. That's all I got for you for today.